So, good afternoon, and uh, thank you, Dr. Pandu, for having me on the course. Um, even if your you do your ble your traps as beautifully as sir uh, does just showed, your job really doesn't end because post-op bleb management is what is important, and you need to manage what you've done and nurture whatever the bleb is. So, uh, trab, remember, is the beginning of a process that takes several months to complete. Actually, there are alterations in bleb morphology and aqueous outflow, and appropriate management at the appropriate time is essential to ensure a sort of bleb like this that we'd all like to see every time. So, the ideal trabeculectomy should leave you with a diffuse, mildly elevated bleb with normal conjunctival vasculature, visible fluid, yet the scleral flap should be visible, a well-formed AC, a tightly closed conjunctival wound, and a patent sclerostomy. So this, this would be what you should be aiming for every time. What we definitely don't want and we can predict and manage in time are the scarred blebs, the tenon cyst, the thin cystic blebs, <clears throat> the fibrosis, and of course a leaky bleb. So we'll just go over the usual post-operative course of what happens once the trap is done and the patient comes back to you next morning. Frequent monitoring is required. So it's labor intensive in the post-operative period. So don't go with the assumption that you've done the trap and your job is over because you need to tell the patient that if you've taken leave and you've come from far, then have arrangements to stay back for a couple of weeks because we're going to follow you up and manage that bleb in that time. It allows changes in bleb characteristics to be identified and you do have an early window of opportunity to modulate these changes. So the usual course is weekly for the first month, two weekly for another month and then depending upon the bleb and IOP. And if you do that, usually you can land up with a bleb like this at about four to five weeks and then you can say bye to the patient. So the first post-op day usually would have moderate inflammation where you need to give frequent topical steroids and cycloplegics. If the IOP is high, maybe a gentle massage in the center of the cornea or at the, at the apex of the bleb, wherever you're more comfortable. And it results in fish mouthing and release of aqueous into the subconjunctival space. So this is what we usually do. We just give a gentle massage right at the, at the top of where the bleb is. And you can see the fluid that has percolated into the bleb space. So it's good actually to have a little higher pressure, maybe in the early 20s on the first post-op day, rather than have hypotony, because those are the ones which will do better. Be careful to have the intraocular pressure not lower than the mid-teens, and be careful not to shallow the AC. So be very, very gentle. and. <coughs> Okay, so the bleb is usually quite vascular. If excessively corkscrewed or inflamed, we usually give a subconjunctival 5-fluorouracin under uh, aseptic conditions. Usually that's 5 milligram per 0.1 cc. It's available as 250 milligram in 5 cc or 500 milligram in 10 cc. So the concentration is ready for you. You may or may not dilute it further depending on <coughs> what your comfort level is. Be careful, there is a risk of IVFU going into the eye. So do not ever massage first or do not ever give IVFU first and then massage it because then your, the hypotenuse is going to drag your IVFU in. And I'm sharing this because I've done this, that we gave the IVFU and then decided, no, no, let's massage it a bit. And you can see the cornea in front of you becomes like that and I thought we would be landing up in a PK. But thankfully, just with frequent steroids, this patient's endothelium recovered. But it's a dangerous thing to do, so be very careful. So when to manipulate it, if the IOP is still high, and uh, releasable suture removal or laser suture lysis can be done. So you can see the suture there. And uh, this is easy. You just pull on the suture which is there. The loop is on the cornea, and this suture will just release. So that's very much part of our trabeculectomies nowadays. It's best to do it within the first week, definitely, but not later than three weeks, even with MMC. So this would be the typical course in a young patient. Day one, all we need to do is give frequent steroids. And then by day seven, the suture removal and 5-FU should be given. And then by day 21, all going well, you should have a trap which is on its way to remodel and <coughs> get to nearly normal conjunctiva. So you have problems often. What if the IOP is low? So the first thing is look at the bleb. If it's high bleb with a very shallow AC, 
So the logic is that it's just filtering too much, isn't it? So if it's filtering too much, what you need is either a pressure patch, you need atropine, or you might need AC reformation. Normally AC reformation, we wait until the, there's lenticular or even a pupillary rough touch or a very shallow uh, uh, AC, but a peripheral corneal AC or corneal iris touch does not require AC reformation. More often than not, just cycloplegic and frequent steroids are all that's required. If it's low, with or without shallow AC, look carefully for a leak. So <clears throat> if the bleb is not formed, then see if there's a leak. If there's a frank leak like this, so the seedles would be, th this is a frank leak there, which requires resuturing and then should be taken off into the OR. And look for a choroidal detachment and retinal detachment for every case of hypotony following a trabeculectomy. So this is a typical over-filtering bleb. This is post-op day one with IOP of one millimeters, a grade one shallow AC, which means there's a peripheral touch. All we need to do is give cycloplegics and atropine. We just have this fancy machine, so I'm showing you. This is the cassia with the bleb module in it. You can see there's so much of fluid there because it's over-filtering from the sclerostomy. And all we did was a pressure patch and down gaze kept under observation. And you can see this part of the fluid has come down, this big pocket, and the, the bleb looks much better. Over-filtering bleb, this is post-op day five. Now you see all these corkscrew vessels. If you're even with pressures low, so please remember 5-FU has nothing to do with the intraocular pressures. If you do not give 5-FU and intervene at this time, by the time your, is, your aqueous is going to build up or ciliary body is going to kick in again, these blebs are going to fail. So we did give a 5-FU then. And by the time it's post-op day five, you can see now it's nicely, it's coming in and the AC is formed better. So all we've done is pressure patch on day one frequent steroids and, and uh, cycloplegic and this is how he is on day 5. So a little later in the course of the trap, this is very very early but several indicators point to risk of bleb failure. One would be an excessive conjunctival injection, one would be corkscrewing of vessels. Corkscrewing of conjunctival vessels means underlying fibrosis happening. So that's when you need to intervene with 5-FU or an antifibrotic agent. Increasing IOP, you need to ask yourself why. Is it a high bleb phase or is the bleb getting insisted? That's typically at six weeks. And if that happens, you need to give an aqueous suppressant. If it's flattening of the bleb, then it's inadequate filtration. You need to consider needling because then obviously it's fibrosing, it's, it's uh, scarring down, and you need to open it up. But do a gonioscopy and look at sclerostomy every time. Sometimes it's as simple as an iris, which is plugging it, in which case all you need, maybe just a Sinsky hook is enough in the OR to pull it out and then give five of you and take it as it comes. So this is an example of a high bleb phase. This is at six weeks and the pressures are 26 when it was fine. So all you need to do is start an acrous suppressant, start timolol. Here the, the filtration is too much and it's insisting it there. And so at 10 weeks, you can see that the bleb is settling, the bleb height is less and the IP is 14. When it's, once it starts settling, you taper off the timolol give a post-op 5-FU injection and in four months the fluid is diffuse and the bleb height is less and the pressure is 16 off drugs. So if you recognize this in time, <coughs> it's not going to go into a tense tenon cyst. Just to one caution, if an ologen is used, this looks like a tenon cyst very much, so be very careful, especially if there are patients who you have not operated on or if it's a very, very busy clinic and somebody else has done it. So please don't think this is a, a tenon cyst because if with this ologen in place you're going to inject a 5-FU, that could be very, very dangerous because it's going to sequester all that 5-FU right there. So be very careful. So this was pseudo exfoliation with more severe glaucoma. Elderly with thin conjunctiva, therefore an ologen was given, but it needs constant massage over three to four weeks and it tends to press over the scleral flap and raise the pressure. So be, be a little more careful so that post-op management of an ologen bleb is a little different from the usual post-op course. Now if you have a scarred or failed bleb beyond six weeks or three months, uh, we did this thesis with uh, Dr. Anamika, who's now in Raipur. So we looked at uh, blebs with the UBM and we coined the term scleral root patent and occluded and we realized that half of them work because if you're going to do subtenons needling and your scleral root is occluded, you're not going to be doing much good. So those are the ones which require bleb revision and the ones where there was scleral root under the 
the, the sclerostomy were the ones who did well and who did well with the needling. So this is of course post-op bleb needling and you can see with the scleral root patent, a subtenance needling does get back the bleb, but not if it's not. So another possibility nowadays is, uh, is an ab interno and I'll just go through a quick video to show you that. This is a Grover Feldman's biplanar sclerostomy spatula, no financial uh, interest, but it's available from Epsilon, which is right here outside. So this is a large cyclodialysis spatula sort of thing, but it's very, very long. It's about 20 millimeters. And you can actually do an ab interno approach to revising a bleb without opening up conjunctiva, and that's, that's something which is really found to be useful. This is a short clip to show you. This is what the Grover's Feldman spatula looks like, popularized by Devendra Grover. So you can see this scarred bleb there, and you go about 180 degrees across. Of course, you're sitting on, on the temporal side of the patient, so you go as temporal or inferior temporal as you can. So that was pilocarpine. This is sodium hyaluronate on the surface before you put in. So this is with an indirect gonial lens. The tricky part is negotiating the spatula under vision using the lens. So you go right across and then put in the lens. And there you can see it's a little bit because you keep pressing on the cornea as well. But once you encounter the, the sclerostomy, then it's easy. So once now, now you can see that it's engaged the sclerostomy. And once you know that, that it's engaged into that, that hole in the, in the sclera, because you know that it's scarred down, and then the, the gonioscope is going to come off. And then you can start with doing your ab internal revision. So just with a gentle approach, a little side to side, a little anterior, posterior, to and fro. This is basically to lyse the subscleral fibrosis. So it's easy, it's less invasive than doing a full revision. It's just one incision down there and then a bud, bud in the other hand to just stabilize the globe a little bit. So in a minute you'll see the tip of the blue spatula, which is when you know that you've negotiated. So there you are, if you can see that. So th the video is not coming out so well there, but if you can see this thing there, there you are. So this means that you've negotiated the scleral flap and you're now in the sub space. And once you're there, there you are. So once you're there, you know that, that most of your sub thing is done. And now you'll see your bleb starting to form. So now you can easily go side to side and just be a little careful at this time. But it's a very blunt spatula. So unless you're really, really aggressive, you're not going to cut the conjunctiva. So as you do this, you can actually see your bleb forming. And <coughs> the adhesions are broken. So we'll just see what it look like. So this is what it's like. So the only thing is you need to give pre-op injection MMC, 0.02%. I'll just take 10 seconds more. <clears throat> and that's the sclerostomy site, sorry. So this is, be sure that your sclerostomy site is open. And these are the bleb pictures at day 14 and day 28 from the fibrose bleb there. And this is the same case that we just saw. So if it's late hypotony, that's a problem. We wait for about two to three months at the most, but otherwise you need to intervene. And uh, what we do is either you can put compression sutures or you can do an advancement and a bleb revision, both of them, but recognize them earlier. So we'll just skip this. It can be very frustrating. So it's the beginning of a process. There are many adjustments. Each of the interventions has a specific role. There's no all sizes fit one. Recognize the bleb morphology. And it's a sobering fact that despite close monitoring, some traps ultimately fail. Thank you. I acknowledge my senior residents. Three of them are sitting here. And thank you for putting this together. Thank you, <coughs> Dr. Shushmita, I think taking through the post-operative uh, management. Uh, of these blebs, but this is very important because even if you had done a very good trav, you can't really predict. On table, it might look a perfect trivicolectomy, but when you see those patients four to six weeks down the lines, you, you can't imagine, you know, what happens. So that's why it's very important to follow these, uh, these blebs, uh, you know, periodically, and uh, literally we see them every week and sometimes maybe more than once a week. Uh, at least for six weeks, and after that they tend to, and then you know what's happening. So four to six, six weeks is the time when they really, really need uh, uh, monitoring. 
and uh, you might have to do multiple things. Uh, there's no one, uh, you know, uh, scheme that fits fits all the all all, all the people. So I think uh, Dr. Shushma has given you a fairly good idea how we manage these labs. Uh, and if you have any questions, I think that I'm sure we'll be happy to take them.